Hello everyone, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab and today I will come another video about TrueNAS, exactly. In this video I will show how you can install Docker in TrueNAS. The truth that TrueNAS come with an uh, open system called FreeDBS. In this system you cannot uh, install natively Docker, but you can use other Linux distributions to do the same job. So in this video I will show how you can create your first virtual machine and in this virtual machine, we're gonna install Ubuntu. And in this Ubuntu, we're gonna install Docker and Portrait. Why? Because not all the applications that you want or you could want have natively in the true NAS. So you can use the Docker to complete all the application that is missing and have a best express with your true NAS. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's do it. First of all, before we start to do any installation, we go through our my system. The system that I'm using it's a TrueNAS 12 U4, have a E5 3570K with five threads, and they have a 16 gigabytes of RAM. The pool that I have it's a 500 gigabytes in mirror. It means that two hard drives exactly the same, and I have one G one GB network connection. I initially tried to run it in a virtual machine. Basically, I use a virtual box to simulate a virtual machine to use the true NAS, and inside this true NAS, I tried to do another virtual machine, but this one didn't work. You can create the virtual machine, but when you try to run it, they only crash and everything is going wrong. So I decided to get one of my old computers and install this true NAS only to do some trials. This reason that the memory is not so big. So have this one in mind, I as well create a user. If I come here in user, I create a user as a Sauber. Because Sauber Lab, blah, 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 and continue on. Other thing that we need to consider is the storage pools. In this pool, I have a home where I create, as well a EOKH where I have all the applications that will go to the standard from uh, the TrueNAS. After this one, we have the share folders where I create my SMB, and my SMB, I create my folder called Sauber. I know it's a mistake, I should create as a home, but as I create a red as a Sauber, I was lazy to change it and it's not making any difference for our installation, so it's fine. Before we start to create any virtual machine, we need to download the image that we're gonna install. The image that we're gonna install is the Ubuntu image. If I come here in part of download, if I click in get Ubuntu server and I come manual installation, I can download the Ubuntu Lite. Why the button light? Because it's light, don't have the desktop option that you're gonna not to use it, you're not gonna use it and it will save space and capacity and run and everything. So if you don't need only to run Docker, why you need to install something extra? So we're gonna download this option and after this one, we're gonna copy this image in our system. In my case, I write the copy here, I save in the Sauber, should be home and I create a folder called VM. Inside this one, I, I save my image that I'm gonna install. Have everything set from this start, we're gonna minimize this one, go back in our true NAS, and start to create our virtual machine. To create our virtual machine, simple. We come here in virtual machines, and we click and add. Will be exactly the same procedure that you could do if you need to install in a virtual box, VMware, Proxmox, and everything. It's exactly the same idea. You define this operating system, how much you want to dedicate for your system for this virtual machine, and then which image that you're gonna install, and it's done, then it's only run it. So first thing we decide which operating system that you're gonna run, it's a Linux, wonderful. What's the name? I will create as a Ubuntu, Ubuntu, perfectly. The description will leave exactly the same, system clock, local, Imagine that you want to put a different one, you can go for UTC and decide which one, but let's leave as a local. And the boot method I will leave as UFI and 90 minutes as a timeout. I want to leave a start on boot because all the time that my true NAS restart, I want that this virtual machine start together and I want to enable VNC. Why this VNC? It's basically a remote desktop for you access this one. 
Otherwise, you're gonna need to install some way, some way. And if you don't have this VNC, it will be a little bit more complicated for you. So we can do it and come in next. Now we define how much of your computer or your power will be dedicated for this virtual machine. In my case, I have five cores, so I can dedicate one, two, three CPU, and that will affect, but not so much. If you have only two threads, don't try to divide these two threads with your virtual machine and your computer because then it will crash or they will not run as fast as you could be. So I will put only two virtual machines and now we can allocate our run memory. In my case, I have 16 gigabytes of run. As a standard, the true NAS require 8 gigabytes from your, the operating system plus 1 gigabyte for each terabyte of data that you have. In my case, I don't have any terabyte of data, only 500. So in theory, I only need nine gigabytes of run. If I have 16, I could use seven gigabytes. But uh, seven is too much. I think that's uh, 24, one gigabyte is totally fine. And I will put next. Now they ask you for you create the disk that you're gonna install it. So we select to create a new disk. The tape of the disk is this one, it's totally fine and the location. So I come here, put the location as a pull home and the size of the disk. Remember, if you put a size too small of your disk, you're gonna have a problem in the future with run out of space. And when you need to install more applications in the Docker and you don't have this space, it will not work so well. And you don't put so big memory, but otherwise it will be only a Docker running computer. And then you, don't need to install TrueNAS to do it. You can install directly in a Ubuntu directly in your computer and do this procedure. So let's put the 50 gigabytes that I think that will be a good number. And I put next. After this one, I'll select what kind of network interface that I want to install. If I want that it will be a bridge between my computer, I'll go for this option. But in my case, I want directly access for the internet. Why it? Because I will configure this operating system to run proxy manager or to run others application that will manage this part of proxy reverse for me. So I need to have as an Intel directly connection for my network. Other thing, the MAC address can be the same and the connection will be exactly the same because I have only one network card. And I come here next. Now we need to decide what image that we're gonna install. To do it, as I save in home and VM, I will locate it. The same procedure, MMT, pulse, home, VM, and select my image that I read, uh, download and copy my file. So I can come here and next. Now they ask you to review if all the information is correct. And if everything is okay, we're gonna come here and put submit. Wonderful, we just create our machine, our virtual machine, but it's not running yet. How we can put to run, only put start. So it will take some minutes until they start. They read to show how much memory that I'm using, how much is allocated. As I told, it's still seven gigabytes that I will not use theoretically. And they say that I still nine, so it's totally fine. I can amplify this page and they show that I have a one GB of memory. My operating system, the local and all the rest of the information. So I can come here and put in VCM. But before I put here, I will explain a little bit of these buttons. First thing I have, uh, how to restart my virtual machine, how to power off, obvious, to stop, to edit if I want to edit some specific information, if I want to delete my virtual machine here, if I want to add a device or remove device, supposedly, I want to add a new CD to run, or I want to add an extra disk that will be a specific location, Always I can come here and modify and add something. I can come here and add, and I can hump a disk, a raw file, a pattern, and anything that you want. So we're not to touch it this time. We only go back, and we're gonna come in VCM. In VCM, the red desk, you want to install which option? I will put as a English UK, and then the ask you to choose which keyboard that you're using. I'm using a uh, British UK and I come here and done. So they will start to apply the configuration and here you already can see your IP address. Remember this number because 
you're gonna need to use those after when you're gonna configure the Docker or portray um, any configuration, you need to choose this IP address. Of course, you can open your router to see which IP address that is using, but it's not the case. So we come here and put that. Now they ask if you want to select some proxy address. In this case, you not to do anything. We're gonna configure it in the future programs where you're gonna install a uh, DocDNS if you want, a Cloudflare application and a uh, proxy manager, all the other application will be directly in the Docker. So we not to touch it yet in the installation of the Ubuntu. I come here and done. They ask where you want to collect all your information or where will be the mirror for your updates. I leave exactly the standard. If you are not happy with the standard and prefer some specific, you can open the website for Ubuntu and look for the list of the mirrors that you have and decide which one that you want. In my case, it's totally fine the default because it's not something that will affect me so much. So I can come here and put it down. They will check if you have the latest version and that's uh, ask if you want to update. I come here and uh, see what information that they will show. First thing they will show, entire disk is 50 gigabytes, exactly the same that I want, and set type uh, disk with a v, uh, LV group, totally fine. They ask if you want to encrypt this disk. We're not gonna do it because it's not neat. If I want to encrypt my data, I can encrypt before and through NAS. In this time, it's only one thing extra to process and I don't want to use my memory for it. So I come here and put done. After they will get overview of all the information that you have, I don't need to worry about it, I only get done. Desk, you are sure that you want to format the disk, all the information will be lost, and if you are sure, put continue. Yes, I am sure, this reason that I'm installed, and this disk, it's new, so I don't care what I have there. I put continue. So now we can start to do our configuration. Your name will be Salber Lab. The server name will be Docker. Your username will be the same, Salber Lab, and my password. And I put that. Now they ask, you want to install already the OpenSSH? Yes, I want to install because it will save some steps for me. So I can come here and put install OpenSSH. They ask if I want to import some specific configuration. No, I don't need to do it. So I can come here and save. Now what are they gonna do? They will do all the installation and will be formatting everything. This will take a really long time because they will download all the image and install it. Of course, if you're installing an SSD, it will be a little bit faster. If you're installing a hard drive, it will be slow. If you have more CPU cores, it will be fast. If you have less, it will be low and continue on. So you don't need to worry about it. If you are curious to see what's going on, you can come here and view full log and that they will show all the steps that they are going through. If you want to review and see, you can go up and down, but in our case, don't need. You can come in here and close and just wait a long time until this one finish. Okay, once that in the installation is finished, they will show the information for you to reboot. So we can come here and reboot. What they will ask, they will give another screen and say, before we reboot it, please remove your media. How we can do, we come here in our Tunas again, we come here in our device, and now I remove my CD room. If I don't remove this CD room, they will want to install again the Ubuntu. So I don't want to do it. I need to leave my VCN option, my disk, and NCI. Let's return here. And now we can come here back in our VCN and put enter. After reboot it, we can open again our VCN and they start already to do the pre-configuration. They start to start our operating system. They ask you to make a login in the Docker. So we're gonna put Sauber Lab, same user, and the password, test123. And he already showed that my IP address is 192.168.1.72. And also they show you how much memory that you're using, you're using 16% of your whole raw capacity. And they ask if you want to do some root commands, you need to go for the sudo. 
So now we can open our put and start to access our VPN. So we can come here now 192.168.1.72 and put open. First time that it will open, we'll show this screen, only the first time, don't worry. And we put yes. So now we can do the login. We can go and put Salber Lab and password that we defined before. And now we are looking with SSH. So open SSH work well. So now we can start to install our Docker. If we come back here and open our Docker page where they say how to install the Docker, they ask you that first you need to remove the old version. In our case, we don't have any old, old version, so we don't need to do it. And we come here and put sudo apt get update, basically to update all our system. And we come here and put update. They will ask, what's the password? If we come back here, uh, we need to install some applications as transport, HTTPS, some CA certification, some course, some GP, GC and LSP re release. All these applications really important for you to install before anything else. Okay, otherwise not work. After this one, we're gonna install this line that it's a doc official GPG. Here we paste it and we're gonna run it. It's really fast, one. Now we can uh, try to see if it's really everything it's okay or not. We can do again our apt get update only to check if our installation previous didn't change anything and didn't need to do any update. So we come here and now we try to install our Docker container and our Docker click. We run here and try to see, they say that they didn't find anything because we didn't run as administrator. So what we need to do, we need to try to install another string. The string that we're gonna install, it's another application normally dedicated for Debian, but will gonna work quite well for Ubuntu as well. Uh, I, don't worry, I will leave the link in the description. So we're gonna run this one, curefslhtpgetdocker.com slash get. It's really fast application. Now we can go and do a run docker. So sudo docker run. Don't worry, link in the description again. This one, it's normally for Debian, but work quite well for Ubuntu. Perfectly, we just finished to install. They appear that the Docker engine has been installed, version 20.10.8. Now we can check if it's really this Docker, it's working well or not. Uh, check it, we're gonna run docker run hello world, and they say don't have permission, so we need to do sudo docker run hello world, because we didn't run as a administrator. Oh, sorry, I think that I typed it wrong. Let me copy here again and do sudo docker run hello world. If everything is okay, they will pull the image and will install. If appear the message here, hello world, as this one, it means that the docker is running and it's work well. So now we can think to install the portrait. To install the portrait, first we need to install our volume for the portrait, sorry. First, to create the volume. To create the volume, it's quite basic. We're gonna run the follow command. Docker volume create portrait underscore dot. Could be only portrait, but uh, underscore dot, it's fine as well. So, sorry, again, I forget to run as an administrator. So we need to put sudo docker volume create portrait underscore dot, the same thing. Has created the data as shown there. Now we can install our uh, portrait. We're gonna have this file docker run and uh, all the application. Before I forget, let me return here and put sudo, otherwise you will have the same problem as before. sudo, and we run it. It will take some time until you pull the image install. It's quite fast. And uh, apparently it's working. So now we can really check if this portrait has been installed and it's working. To do it, we're gonna open our IP for our machine that is not the same for TrueNAS, will be final 59 2.900. And now we're gonna create our user to do it. Our user to run the Docker will be user administration and our password that we're gonna create. The password that put test123 and we put create. Once that's great, we can close this one, open our primary coming container and now we will have the portrait and hello world. It means that everything is running. 
So now we have uh, Docker and Protrade running well in our system. This video is really important for the next installation because in the next ones we're going to install the proxy manager, we're going to install the Docker DNS or the Cloudflare configuration, and then we can manage our proxy reverse using the Docker and then all the rest of the application as Nextcloud, uh, Plex, MB, and other applications directly from the TrueNAS. If you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like. If you don't like, leave your dislike. Subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.